I'm going to, I'm going to jump to a part. I remember when I was at BYU coming across dialogue and even Sunstone, you know, so you guys eventually moved from Huntsville, Texas to Draper, Utah. And at some point along the way, after my mission, uh, while I was in college, you're, you're subscribing to Sunstone and dialogue. How did that happen? Cause this was long before my intellectual awakening with yeah, the church. I, I, I started, I even went to the, you know, the, the annual meetings of the dialogue and sun and sunstone. How did that start? Um, cause you were just an Orthodox Mormon woman, right? It, it started as, um, yeah, it started as just a, des a desire to learn interesting things, something interesting, something different. Do you remember where you first heard of Sunstone and Dialogue? Because it, it wouldn't have been a part of our lives in Texas, right? In yeah, Houston or they, Dallas? because the, it, you weren't able to go to the the symposiums there because that you know it wasn't until I came back to Utah that I was able to uh, to go stuff like that. Did your interest in Dialogue and Sunstone start with you having doubts about the church? No, it just it was just to extend. And to hear some other views on on things, just a lot of the people that wrote and contributed were people that I knew, were friends. And a lot of it had to do with the Association of Mormon Letters. AML. Yeah. You joined an email list, right? Association of Mormon Letters, and, and I, I knew the people that were contributing and who were uh, active in, in those, and, and I think that, that had to do with it. What was AML? Tell people what that is. It was... It still exists, by the way. It, uh, it was an organization of, of Mormon writers. Mormon writers and, um, and intellectuals. And um, I, I was active, and I, and I participated in the in the uh, online, what do you call, web? Yeah, like the email lists yeah. and web, web mm -hmm. forums. And, and I read like much, much of, of the writings of, of, uh, of my associates and friends that I had made. Uh, so you would have been reading Carolyn Pearson... You know Margaret Young and Darius Gray. Uh, yeah, and I and and I got to know all those people personally. And uh, uh -huh. who's the who's the poet writer at, at BYU? Um, I'm trying to think of his name. The playwright oh. from BYU. Oh yeah. I'm spacing on his name for a minute. I am, anyway, I am too. you were really into those writers, right. And authors, and all of that would have overlap with dialogue and Sunstone mm -hmm. at the time, right? Yeah, and I just can't remember anybody's name, but. Yeah, so so that that's how it evolved, and uh, that was an important part of my life. And and uh, for for over, I would say at least ten years. Yeah, you were really into that. So once you started getting exposed, and and through that, you would learn about plays and books that talked about polygamy, that talked about blacks, that talked about the temple, that talked right. about gay gay lesbian Mormons. Yeah, did you? Did you see your faith changing at all at that point? Your testimony, your faith, your intellectual positions with well, the church? Well, when you're learning things, you're always changing. <laughs> yeah. So did but, you start... But you, you don't see yourself changing. But it just it, you just change when you get certain knowledge and certain... Um, you, you have a different perspective... So did you see your, but did you see, did you start questioning the church at all? Did you start having doubts? Did you start being troubled? Did you learn about the peepstone in the hat? Did you learn about, you know, masonry in the temple? Did you learn about uh, Joseph's polygamy? And was there, did you have to reconcile that intellectually? You know, I... Because you were going through a lot of this before I was. Right. Um, like everything else, I just... I, I, it made sense that um, that the, 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 my culture was rich 
and varied and um, layered and that I was just learning about my, my people and my church and my friends and myself. So none of it led to a faith crisis for no, you? No, I didn't ever have a faith crisis. Ever? Ever. To this day? No. Okay. Okay, but you had an intellectual awakening with Mormonism, mm -hmm. and you became aware of all the major issues. Right. Before I was. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. But it didn't, it didn't... But I don't remember you ever saying, hey, John, did you learn about this or that? I, I didn't... You kind of kept it to yourself. Well, yeah, I, it wasn't something you share with your your family. I didn't think it was. It was just something that I, uh, it, it was an, uh, a, a way of uh, increasing my knowledge. And, and uh, it was just, just a personal thing. Yeah. Okay. So, so clearly from my mission to, let's just say at, at my time at Microsoft, my my church experience started becoming rocky. What do you remember seeing in me as I went from my mission to my time at Microsoft? Do you remember any evolution? Do you remember thinking about my relationship with the church? Do you remember worrying about my testimony? You know, I I always felt you were trying to do good. And I knew that you valued truth and that you were kind of searching for that and and but I always felt that you were doing something helpful to somebody even though it wasn't my choice of of what what way I would go that that was your way of contributing and and whenever you were involved in any, like you were, of course, I, I'm skipping ahead now to all the, all the activities and, and counseling and, and all that kind of stuff. Well, let's come back to that. Do you remember me sliding into a faith crisis? And do you remember worrying about that? Because it was at Microsoft where I had yeah. my faith crisis. Mm -hmm. Were you, did you remember that? I, I Were you remember, watching it? but I didn't. I didn't take it as 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 bad. I mean, I I took it as just part of the learning process. You weren't worried. Oh my gosh, John's going to lose his faith. No. Why not? I don't know. I just trusted you. Okay. I felt like if if you, I, I I felt like that you would choose the right. You know. <laughs> That you would cho you would make good choices, and they might not be my choices, but that that you would make wise choices for you, and that um, and I I don't I don't agree I don't believe that you should keep people from learning or growing or changing. So when I hit full faith crisis mode at Microsoft. Do you remember that time? Yeah. Do you remember us being able to talk about it or not? Well, I think you protected me a lot. I think you protected me a lot. What do you mean? You know, I don't think you you told me the the depths of your of your uh, searching and the depths of your suffering. What do you think about that? Well, I don't. I don't know that I could have helped you. Right? Were you worried? Well, I just thought once I once I kind of lost my faith and didn't believe the church was what it claimed to be. Were you worried? It, to me, if as long as you were honest with yourself and with me, and I felt you were honest. That that that's that was the criteria that I was that was important to me. It wasn't that you believed exactly the way I did. That wasn't important to you. For you, integrity was the most important thing. Yes. And you wanted me to be to learn and to be true to myself. Okay. 
So when I left Microsoft and then eventually started Mormon Stories, what did you think about that? Well, I thought, I, you know, it seemed like an, a normal thing for you to do. What do you mean? Well, it gave you a, a platform. It gave you a... How is that normal? <laughs> well, for you... What do you mean for me? I hadn't been a public figure before then. Well, you, you were you were kind of you know you were searching for people who, who, uh, I I think you were trying to help people. But as it turned out, I think a lot of times they helped you. So you weren't worried when I I mean it's one thing to have a private personal faith crisis. It's another thing to kind of take that public. You had been a very heads down Mormon, uh, a person of faith. Here I am starting a podcast and talking about racism and sexism and homophobia and Joseph Smith's polygamy on the internet for everyone to hear. Your husband's a devout Mormon, former bishop of 11 years, temple worker for 20 years. Was that hard for you? Was it weird? Was it were you worried? Well, I I wasn't worried because I I just felt like you knew you knew what you were doing. I didn't feel like you were taking on the some of the I didn't feel like you were changing your personality and changing your per, uh, your um, your personal habits. You know, if you were if you if you had made a dramatic change in your personal habits and in your your personality, I think I would have been worried. But I I I didn't I don't think you changed in your personal life. I didn't feel like you did. And you started listening to the podcast pretty early on, right? Mm -hmm. Did it ever affect your testimony, your faith at all? No, because I, I thought you were you were interviewing other people and you were talking about other people's writings and other people's feelings and other people's opinions, and I didn't take it personal, all that personal to you. You were you were a you were a you were facilitator. You were facilitating their feelings, opinions, research. So that's the way I looked at it. A lot of people were concerned about like, oh, you're taking away people's faith. You're criticizing the church. Did you ever have those concerns that I was either taking away people's faith or, or being critical of the church? No, because I don't believe that. I what? believe I believe a person you you aren't responsible for changing people's way of thinking and 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 acting i i don't think i i i think we do have an effect on other people but i don't think we're responsible and i didn't think you were responsible i think some people might have have, have made it look like you were responsible for the way they felt and thought because it was it was trendy or something like that, but I think I think most I think people need to be responsible for, for themselves, and and even even uh, as uh, maturing children and adults. Right, as you got exposed to, you know, Joseph's polygamy and polyandry, the you know, the Book of Mormon historicity stuff, the Book of Abraham historicity, all the, you know, truth claim stuff, the masonry in the temple. Did it change your views about the truthfulness of the church from your your, your listening to Mormon stories? No, I, it was, to me, it was separate. <laughs> what do you mean? I mean, it was... I, I just, I just, it was the truth and the gospel. 
the church and the gospel. And so whatever truth or falseness I would talk about and discover, that's separate from the gospel. Well, for you. Yeah, it was it was knowledge. You were seeking knowledge. You were seeking truth. You were seeking an education. And to me, it was part of your education. What about criti being critical of the church or its leaders? Did that ever bother you? I felt like you you had your your reasons. I felt like in in many cases you pointed out things that that I agreed that I agreed with, and other other things I I think weren't as weren't as critical. And I didn't, I didn't feel like you were trying to, to, you know, to destroy the church. I felt you were trying to improve the church, and that some of the things that, that you, some of the ideas and some of the things that you, you were important to you, um, were useful. Right. And that, and that, and that, and it was up to the church. You know, they could think of you as a pariah that was trying to destroy the church, or they could think of you, hmm, it's a pretty good idea, let's, let's try this. <laughs> right. So I'm going to just take you through kind of the, the major truth claims of the church. And I, uh, before we get to my communication, and I just want to get a pulse for where you are on these big things. Is that Okay. Yeah, but I don't know that it's going to be any different than what we've talked about. No, I think it will be. So God, is for you, is God an anthropomorphic God with a body and hands and feet and a beard and that sort of thing? I don't know. I don't know the nature of God, but I believe in God. And I don't know that anybody knows for sure. So if the church teaches God's a, a exalted man, your answer is what? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the answer. Okay. So Jesus says the Son of God and resurrected and the Savior of the world. What do you think about all that? Do you consider yourself a Christian? I do, because I've I've thought about it. I've thought, well, why do we need, you know, why do we need a savior and that sort of thing? And I think we do. I think we need, a, we need a, a model. The the way the savior lived. The way he lived his life, the kind of person he was. That's what I think about it. It's, I mean, it's not as much, of course, you know, what could be more than sacrificing your life. But still, it's the way he lived, not the way he died that's important to me. So what about like all of us are sinners and we needed someone to be punished for our sins? No, I don't believe in all that. So all that atonement stuff. Well, for you, it's just the example he set and that he was willing to die for the example. What about resurrection? Resurrection is important to me. So you believe Jesus was resurrected? Yes. And that because of that, will be resurrected? Yes. Okay. Um, what about, you know, Joseph Smith? What are your thoughts on Joseph Smith? I, I, don't, I don't know if I believe half the stuff written about Joseph Smith, but even you if You mean the good or the bad? But Well, the bad... I don't know that I believe all of that, and if and if it, if it is true, um, knowing the way, knowing what life is really like, I I just think he was a he was a man of his times. He he was a great prophet, and. I don't need to understand and and take it all apart and and uh, I don't I don't need to 
take it any further than that. So like just a couple things, like his first vision, how the story changed over time. Does that bug you at all? No. Why not? I just think I'm bored with it. <laughs> uh, and what about um, the book of Abraham and him claiming it was a translation, but it probably wasn't? I don't care about it. But if he lied and said it was a translation when it wasn't, what? No, and I'm not challenging yeah. you. I want you to yeah. help people understand why that doesn't matter to you. Why wouldn't it matter to you if he's like, hey, everybody, I translated this papyrus into the book of Abraham, and then Egyptologists say there's no connection between the two. Why wouldn't that make you go, oh, my gosh, he was fooling people or he was a fraud or whatever? What keeps you from being concerned about that? I'm genuinely curious. I really don't know. I don't have a concern about it. I, I, I'm familiar with it, and I know what's, I know the story, and uh, I, I don't need to know. But what keeps you from saying, well, he was dishonest? What keeps you from going there? Because I, I don't know that. Maybe he was, and maybe he wasn't. I don't know for sure. <laughs> there's just some things you don't know for sure, and there's no way of fi figuring it out. Right. What about his polygamy, lying to Emma about it, marrying 14-year-old girls, <laughs> sending men on missions and then marrying their wives, marrying wives who were married to other men? Did that seem, if he had sexual relations with 14, 15, 16-year-olds as a 35, 36, 37, 38-year-old, does that bug you? No. Why not? <laughs> That's. I mean, if I did that, you'd probably be embarrassed. You'd probably be shocked and disturbed. Why, why doesn't Joseph disturb you that way? I'm not saying it should. I'm just curious. Yeah. Why, why doesn't it? Because it's too removed from my life. What do you mean? It's too removed. It's too... F Just too, too long ago to matter? Well, sure, it matters, but I'm just... I, I just... I, I take from my religion the things... The good things, the things that are useful, and and I don't struggle with all the periphery. So it's sort of a practical response. It's just like that's long ago. We don't know what really happened. It's not really real and meaningful to my life today. That's what you're and saying. I I just think we we don't know for sure. We know what so-and-so said or he said or they said and but you believe he was a polygamist right joseph smith yeah yes i do but i didn't i didn't know it at you know years ago but you do now we, we didn't yeah i do now so the fact that he married 14 year olds or other men's wives or whatever now doesn't bother you just because it was so long ago i'm I'm not, I'm just trying to restate. Is that what you're saying? It's just not, it doesn't impact your life today. And so I, I, a lot of people yeah. just, a lot of people share your view. And then there are others that are like, no, 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 no. I was taught something different. And if he did all these CD things and he lied to Emma, just, then it, then it maligns his character, which then maligns their commitment to the church. No, but you don't go there. Why? No. Why? I just. I just. I just take. I just. I don't. <laughs> I don't know how to answer it. It's just not important. It's not m meaningful today. Is that fair? <laughs> I just don't have any response for that. What about the book? Like some really care that the Book of Mormon either really happened or it didn't. Do you believe the Book of Mormon is, is a historical document? Do you believe Nephi and Moroni existed? Or did the Joseph kind of made that book up? I don't know. What do you think is likely? You know, the steels and the horses, the yeah. steel and the horses and all yeah. that. 
it's not important to me. Whether it's true or not? No. What if you made it all up? Well, what do you think about the Bible? What about it? Well, it's the same thing. So for you, the Book of Mormon and the Bible could all be made up. Yeah. But that doesn't bug you. Why? Because they're, they're, they're trying to put over a point. What is that? The point is um, they're, t they're teaching a, a precept, a concept, or they're teaching uh, a story. And whether, whether or not it really happened or, or it's, it's just a, a way of telling the story, I have no idea. But if Joseph made up the Book of Abraham and he made up the Book of Mormon and they weren't really from an angel and they didn't really happen, that means he made up the religion and it really wasn't from God, right? Or not? <laughs> I think you're going to get letters on all this stuff. What do you mean? <laughs> Getting your mom in the corner and... <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't would you ask those questions to anybody else but your mom or is your mom the only one that you could get away with asking all those questions <laughs> I think I ask those questions to pretty much everyone I've ever interviewed ever <laughs> but I'm pressing you probably a little bit harder than I do some of yeah. my listeners but what so again this is I'll just ask it one last time if Joseph made it all up and if God didn't really command polygamy, then many people just say he was a charlatan, and the and the so the church is false. What keeps you from going there? Because I I don't care if it was made up or if it really happened. What are you talking about? I don't. <laughs> why not? <laughs> because. So why believe and be a part of a church that could be a fraud? Because scripture is writings, spiritual writings, scriptural writings, religious writings, for edifying people. Hopefully, um, hopefully it's for um, enhancing and making life better. And to me, if it doesn't matter if it's true or if it's made up. If it makes people... Because if, if there's a message and it's, it's a positive, something you can use, even if it's negative. I mean, if, if it's... If it's... Uh, I don't know. I, I think I've explained it the, the best that I can. What I hear you saying is if it makes people better, then it's good. Well, yeah, it wouldn't be if it made them worse, it wouldn't be good, would it? So. <laughs> <laughs> so for you, if it makes people better, has positive messages, it's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's the way I feel about Scripture. And the church. Yeah. It doesn't matter if the church is true if it's good, it makes people better, and it's positive. You're you're okay with it, is that right? Mm -hmm. I don't I don't mean to put words in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> is that an okay summary? Yes. Do you believe this is the one true church, and all the other churches are? No, I think there's truth in every every re, every religious tradition. I think there's truth in every religious tradition, and I think that's why I feel the way I do, is because there's there's truth coming down from anciently. Truth seems to survive. Right. Do you think our prophets talk to God in some way that's different or superior? I I, I don't doubt anybody who claims they talk to God. I really don't. So do you think of Russell M. Nelson as your prophet? Thomas S. Monson as your prophet? Gordon B. Hinckley as your prophet? Do you think of them as 
men who have a special relationship with God? I think so. The church teaches it's the one true church. I know. But you just don't. That's not important to you. Right? That's something you don't believe. <laughs> are you losing are you getting frustrated with me? <laughs> um, what about the church's stance on LGBT people? What do you think about that? I, I think um the church does what the church needs to do, what they think they need to do. But I think that um, I think it's unnatural to require someone to uh, to go against their nature. So the church is saying to gay men shouldn't get married. You think what? Um, I, I, I don't, I don't intend because whatever I would say would would be casting judgment on the churches, and I think that the church in many cases have knowledge that we don't have. The man on the street doesn't have. And uh, so, do you think it's wrong to be gay or lesbian or bisexual? No, it's not wrong. Do you think it's immoral? You mean to practice? Yeah. If two gay men fall in love and get married, is that wrong or immoral? Well, no. What if two gay men get married and have sexual relations? Is that immoral or wrong? That's a fair question. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, I would guess you would say, no, it's not wrong. But why are you pausing? Because I've gone as far as I can go. I'm, I've gone as far as I can go, as far, as far as my knowledge. And so are you for intelligence. So are you for same-sex marriage or against it? Do you have an opinion on it? Um, I I have an opinion, but I but I don't I don't want to pass judgment on the church's reason for for why they do what they do. Okay, but your personal view, if someone were to give you a chance to vote for or against same-sex marriage, would you vote for it or against it? Leaving the church out of it, your personal views. I'd get, I'd vote for it. You vote for it, and if if a grandson or a granddaughter came to you and said, "Hey, Grandma, I'm gay or I'm lesbian. I found the love of my life, and I'm getting married." What would your response be? Well, I just said I'm for it. Well, what would your response to them be, Grandma? I'm in love. I'm getting married to a, a man. I'm a man. What would your response to them be? My response would be, <laughs> am I invited? <laughs> <laughs> would it be congratulations? Would it be, I'm glad you found love? Well, I, that's unrealistic. What do you mean? To congratulate someone if they found love? That's unrealistic? What do you mean? It's for them to come and tell me in that way. It just, it's, it just sounds fake. But are you happy, would you be happy if a gay grandson or granddaughter found, found love it. and got married? Yes. You'd be happy for them? Sure. You wouldn't believe they were sinning or doing something wrong? Well, I don't like to judge people. Okay. You'd just be happy for them? Yes. Okay. But you personally don't believe it's a sin? No, I don't put that in the sin category. Okay. <laughs> Okay. All right. Um, and so the church's November policy, what, how do you feel about Prop 8? The churches have all been in Proposition 8. 
trying to defeat same-sex marriage in California? Politically, getting I don't want to p- comment on that. Okay. I, too political, and I, I don't want to comment on And then the November policy where it, it said that kids of gay couples couldn't get baptized and couldn't be blessed. Well, I think there's a reason for that, but they... they it is so extensive and and layered that I I've I've thought about that I I've, I've thought well I don't want to comment on that. Okay, so it sounds like it sounds like kind of what you're saying is that you want to give the church the benefit of the doubt that they may have their reasons for what they do. You may personally feel okay with same sex love, same sex marriage, but you don't want to stand in condemnation of the church for whatever decisions they make, you kind of want right. to give them the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Is that fair to say? Yeah, because they, they know more than I do. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, so what was it like for you when you found out that, um, that the church was going to hold the disciplinary court on me? I was sad. I was sad. Why? Because, um, because you, you've always been, um, uh, had, you've always been honest. with with what you were doing and you i i just i understand why they did it and and uh but it sure i felt bad but i understand they can't be you know they asked you not to do it, and you kept doing it. And uh, and they're they're running a church. They're they have more concerns than just one person, even though the one is important. Do you remember testifying at my disciplinary council? Uh huh. What was that like? Well, I. I was really happy to be there. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, there seemed to be a lot of irony there because um, because of, of your uh, character and your... Uh, you know, who you are. And it's it's like the, there's there just seems to be irony in in the the type of a person you've always been. And I don't think you've changed. Um, you've always been a a devout person in your. Um, Especially in in church, and you've always been a, what I considered an ideal um, person. You were obedient. <laughs> You're not being obedient right now, but you were obedient. You were devoted. You were respectful. You were kind. You had you were living um, an exemplary life in every way when when you went on this quest to uh, to get some of your questions answered. 
And for me, I don't think you've changed. I don't think you've changed. I think you just, um, you can't go against your feet, your integrity. You can't go against what you believe. And I wouldn't ask you to do that. And the church can't support you in in going, in doing, and and you know being involved in the things that you do. They can't support you. They can't take you, John, to Lynn, one person, and, and throw their support behind you because they're running a worldwide church. And although I'm, I I think you're still important to them. Um, it just, it's, it wouldn't work. So they had to take a choice, and they chose their stewardships. And you had a choice, who? You had a choice. You, Did... you were given a choice, and, and, and the choice you had was to follow your, to follow your um, integrity and to follow the things that you thought were right, and, you, and that's what you chose to do. So you chose, you made your choice, and they made their choice. Were you disappointed in me? No. Why not? Because I knew you were going with your integrity. That you were, you had, you have certain um, guiding. You have a guiding, guiding influence in your life, just like everybody else. And and you're trying to be true to what you what you believe in. You're you're trying your best to um, follow your the guidance that you're getting from from what, whatever you want to call it. It's still small voice or. <laughs> or whatever you call. Do you feel like, what, were you disappointed in the church for excommunicating me? No, I think they had to. I think that their back was to the wall, and I think they had to. Did that affect your testimony at all in the church? No. Even though it's your kid? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I don't. I don't know what to say. It's just, it's just, it's just what it is. Uh, do you think I'm going to be kept out of heaven or the celestial kingdom? How do you view families in the afterlife? Like, do you feel like you'll be in the celestial kingdom with Don, but I'll be in the telestial kingdom because I was excommunicated? No, I don't believe it's going to be like that. How do you view heaven? I just don't. I, I believe... <clears throat> I believe the honest in heart will be <clears throat> in whatever kingdom. And I think you're honest in heart. So you think we'll be together in heaven? <clears throat> yes. What about this idea that only people with the right baptisms and the right temple marriages get to be together in heaven in the social kingdom? Do you buy that? No. So who gets... Is there three levels of heaven in your heaven? No. What's heaven like for you? Heaven is being with my family. And even if you have family that's no longer a member... You don't think God's going to keep families apart? No. Have you always felt that way, or is that recent? Well, I, I never, I, have, I haven't analyzed it. But for you, the celestial kingdom, Mormonism, where only devout, you know, Mormons make celestial kingdom kind of thing, you're not buying that? Or that God separates families in the afterlife? No, I think honest in heart. Okay. You are married 
you are you are sealed to a man who is also sealed to his first wife. Right. How do you think that's going to play out in heaven? I don't know. I'm I'm concerned. I I feel bad about it. I mean, I'd rather that I was the only one. But that wouldn't be right. What do you mean? Well, it just wouldn't be right because she was she was you know, she was the mother of his children. And it wouldn't be right to her, it wouldn't be right to anybody. You're talking about Denise uh -huh. McCulloch, who is married to Don McCulloch, your, yeah. your late yeah. husband, who recently passed away after yeah. 33 mm -hmm. years. And and so things are hard, but um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't take that away from her or from him. So where does that leave you? I don't know. I have faith. In I have what? faith. Well, I just, I, I have faith that God will be equitable. Because I don't believe in a, in a God that's going to, I don't believe in a, you know, I, I believe that people that are honest in heart will receive their just rewards. Does that mean you'll get a new husband? Does that mean you'll well? Maybe maybe it means that I'll I'll just I'll have time to think about it and I'll <laughs> <laughs> and I'll and I'll be able to accept. There's got to be worse things. Maybe you'll feel better about being yeah. married to someone who's married to someone else. Yeah. So because there may be polygamy in heaven for you. Yeah. Yeah, because there, there's there's no other way. With Don. With with anybody, any anybody who's been married before, or anybody who, um, you know, who isn't the typical husband, wife, and four children, and that's it. There's too many connections and too many diversities and too many, too much, too many things that don't line up. Um, could you foresee a woman being married to multiple men in heaven? Well, I've never thought about it, but I guess I, I, I've never thought about it. I have to think about it. Okay. Okay. Um, a lot of our listeners feel like I've been hard on you. They're kind of mad at me. Do you feel like I've been hard on yes, you? Yes. Huh? I do. What are you most mad about? I do, do you actually ask other people this stuff? All the time, every single interview. <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised you haven't heard me do this with other people. <laughs> Maybe I turn it off at that point. <laughs> <laughs> they are kind of long, right? <laughs> oh, so yeah, people, people, I'm going to read you some of the compliments. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. um, all right. So here are some of the comments uh, from our listeners. She is amazing. Mary writes, I love this mom. Lauren writes, oh man, I love her. She reminds me of my mom and her response <laughs> to your faith crisis. Um, Kathy says, feels like a visit with my own mom. Amazing. Um, yeah, Victoria said she is amazing. Camille writes, how amazing your mother valued integrity and honesty more uh, than your staying within the church. What a foundation of strength you had, John. I agree with that. Uh, I couldn't have done what I did without parents that were loving and supportive and who taught me to value truth. I mean, I feel like so much of what I did was a reflection of what you taught me to stand up for truth and that honesty matters above all else. So I think that coming out there's Julie Devereaux. Uh, do you know who that is? She writes, uh, does that name ring a bell to you? She told me about you the second day I met her. Someone wrote in who knows you. Um, let's see. Jean, Jean, right? Jeannie or Jean writes, isn't she absolutely delightful? I wish you were my mother instead of the stick wielding, uncompromising one that I had. No wonder you flourished, John. 
Um, oh, Christopher writes, I don't know is such a great and honest answer. So people love that you would say, I don't know. Um, several people write that. Um, yeah, I think that really is good. And then, and then people said that my grilling you on the church's truth claims was awkward. Um, <laughs> and, uh, Leslie writes, she is so cute. I love that she holds her ground. Um, uh, and then Lauren writes, this is rough questioning. Jacob writes, it's clear this is a woman who has followed her heart her whole life. And with a heart like hers, she can never go wrong. Can she be my grandma, please? Are you taking applications for grandchildren? All right, Jacob, you can apply. What are you feeling right now? That was very nice. Thank you. Thank you, Jacob. Heidi writes, she's really amazing. She's trying hard to be respectful while telling her views. And then Heidi, Heidi writes, oh my goodness, I'm getting so frustrated with the direction of the questioning. Um, and uh, Judy writes, this is hard on her. I just want to hug her. Has this interview been hard on you, Mom? What's, what, tell me why. Because... This is like putting it in stone. What do you mean? When a video gets made? Yeah. Because you may feel differently about things or have no, different No, I mean, but there's, there are things that I probably would have liked a little more time to think on. There are things I had thought through before, but other things I hadn't really thought about that that, you know, I may have come up with a more logical or more truthful answer. I, I, I was truthful. It's just that it, I, they were hard questions. Yeah. Was it the LGBT questions specifically that were hardest for you? No. No, they were, they were, most of them were hard. <laughs> most of them were hard. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Mom. Heidi writes, I miss my mom who died last year. She reminds me a bit of her, and I can't imagine talking to her like that. Sorry, just being honest. She's so sweet. Thank you. Do, but don't we kind of talk about hard things really directly? Isn't that kind of our, our legacy? Yeah, I guess so, but not on, not, <laughs> not on national TV. <laughs> yeah, okay. So this is, this is kind of, this is our family's legacy. We talk about hard things directly, but it's different when it's being filmed. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you're a really good sport for uh, for letting me talk to you, and I'm sorry you were caught off guard, but but I, I treat I treated you kind of like I do a lot of my guests. <laughs> you're a really good sport. Mom's 84, almost 85. You make 84, 84. look really good. 84. You make 84 look good. <laughs> What's your secret to living so long and healthy? Jeans, I guess. Good jeans. All right. All right. Well, it's probably time to wrap up. Um, again, you've been a really good sport. You're lovely. If you wanted to share with our listeners sort of a closing, you know, what's your life philosophy? If you were, let's say your great grandkids are listening, they're trying to decide what type of life to live. They're trying to decide how to lead a healthy, happy life. What's some wisdom or advice you would give to listeners or your great grandchildren or grandchildren or whoever's listening, if you had to give them some parting wisdom, what would you say? That's the hardest question yet. <laughs> <laughs> what 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 things well, are true for you? Um. There's, there's something that I think about a lot, and that is the Mary and Martha. Um, I think that we, that we all have Mary and Martha capabilities. And I think both, 
are important. And <clears throat> what are, what are those two? What are the two poles? Well, the the Martha is is the the one that gets the job done, does okay. the work and gets the job done, and the Mary is the one that shows shows love, affection, and um, compassion. It's more is more personal, and. Uh, so I think that it's something that I've learned that that both are important. You know, some would say, well, I, I want to be a Mary. I don't want to be a Martha. But still, practical-wise, um, Martha is is important and it's necessary. And so... If if I would if I would say how to live your life, I, I would say that uh, balance that that if you can create a balance, Mary and Martha in your life. Uh, that's what I would think would be. Um, would would work for people and and would they would be happy with themselves if they had a balance and uh, it's, it's my goal what do you say to people who are thinking about leaving the church or not what would you say to them i i wouldn't want to say anything like, don't leave the church, it's important, or leave the church, it's not true. Either. Anything? Well, I, there, there's one opinion that I have, and that is that I relate to people who were raised in the church, not necessarily who are practicing members of the church, but I relate to those people in a strong way. I've heard you say some of your favorite people in the world are kind of liberal Mormons. Yeah. Is that right? Uh-huh. And, and I, I remember talking to Tyler Glenn about that, and he was saying he, he felt exactly the same way, that, that his favorite people are people who are raised in the church. And so it makes me think that, that it's a good way to raise your children. And 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 what what they decide to do with it is up to them. But that it's basically basically good. What if someone says I I don't believe it's true, so I can't raise my kids in it? Well, yeah, sure. I'm not. Okay. I'm not saying I, I'm talking about people who who it's rel that's relative. But it sounds like you're also saying that you don't have to worry about the truth claims. You can be a Mormon and just not care about what Joseph did or whether the scriptures are true. Be a Mormon because it encourages you to do and be good and it t tries to teach good principles. Is that, is that kind of what you're saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's kind of what you've done, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you say to a spouse who's a believer whose spouse loses their faith or leaves the church or to a parent whose kid leaves the church and they come to you and say, my kids left the church or my husband or my wife have stopped believing. Oh, okay. What I, do I do? I, I, I would say in, in every case, the relationship is the most important thing. The husband and wife relationship bond is more important than the membership in the church in my way of thinking. And the same with your child. Your relationship with, with your child is, is, is more important. What if they say, no, the gospel is the most important thing, well, and, and commitment to the church is the most important okay. thing? That can be their way of thinking. But for you, mm -hmm. it's what? My way is thinking the relationship is more important. And you have shown that to me. <laughs> 
and I've never questioned your love or commitment to me as my mom. And I've never felt for a second that you were disappointed in me or that your love was conditional on my commitment to the church or my membership. Thank you. It's been a pleasure, John. <laughs> Thank you for coming on Mormon Stories and sitting in the hot seat. I may have been a little rougher with you than many of my guests. I wonder why that is. <laughs> people are going to think I'm mean. I'm going to get a lot of hate mail <laughs> for this episode. For the people who are really mad at me right now, what do you say to them? <laughs> That they should be? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> All right. Are you ready to be done? Yeah. Are you wiped out? I, I enjoyed it. Thank you, John. All right. I love you, Mom. I love you, son. I love you, too. Thanks for coming on Mormon Stories, Mom. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thanks for joining us for this uh, interview with Nan Parkinson, Delyn McCulloch. Uh, hope you've enjoyed it. I'm going to try and get my dad on. Maybe someday I'll get my sister and my brother on. Um, but um, it's just been a pleasure to let you indulge us for those who made it all the way through to learn about my wonderful mom <laughs> and to see our family dynamics up close and personal. <laughs> <laughs> it's been great to have you. Thank you for joining us. Thanks to everyone who made comments. Mom, there's a lot of people saying how much they love you. Um, they're saying you're brave. They're saying they're crying. Uh, you're inspiring to them. So you need to go back and read all the comments because you've inspired a lot of people. A lot of people are sending you their love. Thank you. All right. Thanks to everyone so much. You guys take care. Uh, big thanks to Cody Layton for doing our audio and video production. Thanks to the Open Stories Foundation board. Uh, Jeremy, Nadine, Kim, and Steve for keeping the nonprofit alive. Thanks to everyone who donates uh, to support us. Uh, feel free to support us if you can at mormonstories.org. Uh, we appreciate that. And uh, we'll see you guys again soon on another episode of Mormon Stories Podcast. Take care, everybody. <laughs> Love you, Mom. Love you.